Hello everyone, this is João from Salmonella Place with another biology tutorial, this time dedicated to some of my favorite molecules out there, antibodies. And I just wanted to do a very quick tutorial where I'll give you some introduction and basics on these molecules so we can go on and move to other more complex topics where you're going to see the word antibody all the time or sometimes, not all the time. But anyway, if this is your first time also hearing the word antibody, I suggest you stay tuned because this is a really great way to get the basics and also understand and learn why these molecules are so important to you. Now, let's start with the first, very, very first question. What is an antibody? And an antibody is, as you can see here on this beautiful image provided to us by Somersault 1824, this is a 3D structure, a 3D re representation of a protein, and of course my answer is right there. So an antibody is a protein, and this is of course the protein structure of an antibody. Now, another important thing to mention is that you have probably heard about the word immunoglobulin. And the word immunoglobulin, you've probably heard from your textbooks or you've heard from your doctor's office when you get a blood test. The, this is just a fancy word used to describe antibodies, so nothing to it. But you're going to hear it all the time and you're going to see why I need to clarify this. But keep in mind, that antibodies and immunoglobulins they are two words that mean the same. They're describing these proteins. Now, moving on to another question that we have to answer is, what do antibodies do? Now, these are devices used by your immune system that do two main things within your immune system. They're responsible for detection and also response, so very important functions in your body. Now, keep in mind from your biology class, we've learned that the immune system have very important functions. Why? Because thanks to this system, we can keep the bad guys away, and the bad guys are not the police, but this image, the police here, is representing the immune system that is kicking out all the bad stuff that you have around your body that you don't want because you don't want to be ill. So antibodies are involved in the defense mechanism of your body. So antibodies equal defense. Now, where do they come from? And I have here a beautiful image of cells. And these are the cells that either produce or secrete antibodies, known as plasma cells. And I have here a zoomed image of a plasma cell. So plasma cells produce and secrete antibodies, and we're going to see a little bit how later on in this tutorial. Now let's move on to the next slide here, and as you can see on your left, you have a 3D protein or a 3D representation of an antibody. And here on the right, you have a simplified model of an antibody that we're going to start using from now on. But the first thing that you notice here is that this simplified model has a clear shape of a Y. So antibodies have a Y shape that you can also see here on the 3D model. So every time you think about antibody, the last letter of the word antibody is clearly the shape of the actual molecule. Now moving on to this slide here, here I just want to clearly state something and also help you visualize of what antibodies do and are in your body. So as I mentioned in the beginning, they work as devices in your immune system that help detect something. But the way they do so is through tagging. So they are great tags that will do something that we're going to see later on, but they are basically going to tag the bad guys in your body and then help the immune system take care of them. And we're going to see that later on. And before we do so, I want to talk about the parts of antibodies. And to do so, we have here the image, the simplified model. First things that you can see on the left and also on the right side, you see two long chains, and these are known as the heavy chains. On the 
left side and also on the right side, you have two light chains. They're smaller and called light chains. And also on the tips, you notice this lighter yellow structures here, both on the heavy and light chains. These are known as the antigen binding sites. So these are the areas that are going to be used to tack the bad guys, the antigens, and we're going to talk about these later. But know that these are the binding sites for those bad guys. Now keep in mind that these, this darker yellow, yellow or orange color is representing a constant area. So this is a constant region of the antibody that is not changed from one or doesn't change much from one antibody to the other. But these, these lighter yellow or lighter orange areas here, these are variable because they change according to the antigen or the bad guy that you want to tag. That's a very important and very key characteristic of antibodies is that they're able to change this, this variable region here depending on the, the antigen that they want to, to tag. Now there are two types of antibodies according to where you find them. And as you can see here on the left, you have B cells. This is a B cell. And the B cells usually produce antibodies and have them on their surface. And the antibodies that are found on B cell surfaces are then called surface antibodies. Now, once these B cells decide to secrete these, these antibodies into your bloodstream, then what's going to happen is that now you start calling these antibodies secreted antibodies. So as you can see here, scientists are quite original when it comes to naming. So we wanted to keep it simple and that's how we do it. Now, moving on to how antibodies work. And you have an image here on your screen of an antigen. An antigen, as I mentioned before, is a bad guy. So it's a molecule or a microorganism that enters your body and wants to harm it somehow or will unfortunately harm it. Now antibodies will be working on that defense mechanism that I talked about and we're going to start seeing how. Now the first thing that I want to pinpoint on antigens are these structures here represented as these blue triangles. These are known as epitopes. And epitopes are molecules found on an antigen and these molecules can either be a polysaccharide or a polypeptide and these molecules will help then the, the antibodies to tag them. So the antibodies will tag these epitopes or these molecules found on the antigen and then allow your, your immune system to detect the antigen and then get rid of it. Now, after being tagged by the antibodies, as we've seen now, the antigens generally come under attack by other cells of the immune system. And examples of these cells are, as you can see here on the right, these T cells, or also known as killer T cells, which can then go after the, the antigen that is now tagged by the antibody, and then of course, do their job you know, try to destroy that antigen and get rid of it. So this combination of efforts between the antibodies and the killer T cells is how our body is then able to quickly respond to any type of antigens that you have in your body, any type of molecules or microorganisms or anything that's trying to harm it. So that's the beauty of of antibodies. Now another type, another type of way that an antibody can help you protect your body or help your immune system protect your body is that say you have a virus as you can see here on, on the left and the virus is trying to infect a healthy cell then what an antibody can do is prevent so this antibody here is preventing the virus from infecting the healthy cell. So that's another cool way on how antibodies can help in your immune system. Now, the last part of this tutorial, I just want to briefly talk about the five classes 
of antibodies that you find in humans and also, of course, other mammals. And these are named by the initials of immunoglobulins, immunoglobulins. And of course, you have immunoglobulin A, immunoglobulin D, you have an E, a G, and the fifth one is an M. This is just a general understanding of, of the five classes, so just a general introduction, because I will definitely try to cover them in a different and separate tutorial because they need to go and be discussed in a little bit more detail. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit our website. And also, if you would like to spice up your scientific presentations, visit Somersault 1824 and discover their amazing and easy-to-use illustrations library.